Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel, Peter Watches TV, where I cover all the TV shows, all the reality TV shows, the Vanderpump Rules, <laughs> the Housewives, I'm getting ready to start Love Island and get caught up, Big Brother is starting at the end of this month, which I am so excited about, I am a Big Brother super fan, so I will be covering all the Big Brother stuff over here, and then I cover all the shows, the Netflix shows, the top 10 trending Netflix shows, the top... Uh, trending shows on Apple TV, the HBO Max shows, the true crime documentaries, all the documentaries, anything you guys want me to cover, put it in the comment section below and I will watch it and cover it. My favorite thing in the world is to binge watch TV shows. So I thought, why not start a TV channel? Why not start a channel where you talk about binge watching TV shows? And one of the recommendations that you guys gave me months ago, uh, several of you, was that you begged me you begged me to start watching Sister Wives. And I was like, no, why? Why do you want me to watch Sister Wives? But I did. <laughs> I did start watching Sister Wives. And um, now I get it, if you want to know the truth. So now I totally get it. Um, so my last video that I did was kind of my introduction into the world of Sister Wives. I finished season two, and um, I told you guys everything that I thought about it. So I think that I'm going to cover like every two to three seasons. I will do a video telling you guys my thoughts about what's going on and what I currently think about the wives and things like that. I will just tell you, there is nothing that you can ruin for me. There is nothing that I do not know. I know all the wives. I know all the stuff about them. I know all the kids. I know currently what's going on with all the kids, where they are, who they're married to, who they talk to, who they follow on the Instagram, who the mothers still follow on the Instagram. I know everything that has happened on Sister Wives up to the current date. I have Google searched all of it. Um, and now I'm just watching it like the I'm binge watching the series back. And I just finished last night. I finished season five of Sister Wives, and um, the last episode is when Logan sadly, sadly goes 30 minutes away to college. <laughs> Is when Logan, the whole family, they make him quilts and things like that. That quilt, let me just tell you, that black and red because it's the UNLV colors, which I thought was so sweet that the family made for him. It was all the pictures, and they all wrote little messages on there, and Cody was like, don't ever have sex until you're married, and then once you're married, you can have sex with as many wives as you want, or something like that. He wrote something like that on there. But anyway, don't get an STD if you do have sex before you know, whatever Cody wrote on there and all that kind of stuff. It was so funny because... The last episode was dedicated to the houses, um, Janelle being bitter. Oh, wait, Janelle's always bitter. <laughs> Janelle's been bitter since the episode one. Janelle being bitter, Logan leaving for college, but the most important part of the last episode of season five was Cody's hair loss. So, um, anyway, now do you guys like check for things like this? So I'm watching it, and the woman that does Cody and Mary's hair, I think her name is Kennedy in the show or something like that. She's very nice, very pretty. But she does like they all wear the the long shirts with like the 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 camp the cam or they call them camis or whatever over that, like the halter tops they wear them, but they want to be modest. And she wears them like that. And I was like, oh, is she a plague too? Y'all just call plagues now. It's like my girlfriends when they get on like the match.com they don't call it match.com i guess they used to call it the match okay oh my god this guy hit me up on the match now i don't call them polygamists anymore i just call them plagues <laughs> because they all call themselves plagues so anyway sadly logan went away to college 30 minutes away <laughs> not even on interstate 30 minutes away from where they live unlv is not even 30 minutes from where they live but anyway so sadly i logan was like the nicest kid in the entire world wasn't he i mean i just thought that logan was such a nice kid um i've read some articles that he's not much on the show after he leaves for college in fact none of the kids really are after they like grow up and leave the house and a lot of them have come out and said that cody doesn't really have any kind of relationship with the uh adult kids so i don't know if that's like a plague thing <laughs> It feels so weird. Like, I'm in the language now. Oh, my God. But anyway, so the highlights of the last couple seasons that I've watched were that Robin had Solomon, her son, with Cody. And then she turned around. I mean, she wasn't even wiped down yet. And she turned to Mary and offered to be a surrogate for Mary, which I thought was very, very nice. Um, I mean, like, this is one of the things I said in my last video. I was trying to explain this to my neighbor yesterday across the street because we're always talking to each other about reality shows. She and I watched Survivor together. So anyway, I was telling her about, I was watching Sister Wives, and I was like, once you get past, like, the polygamy part, she's like, how do you do that? I go, well, I don't really know how to explain it, but, like, you just kind of do. You just kind of, like... 
you kind of just accept them for who they are and whatever. Like, and I listen, I know that a lot of horrific shit comes out, okay? We're not there yet to talk about that. But I'm talking about the early years, okay? And I was telling her, I was like, you know, I feel like I'm still, like, kind of in the, in the innocent years. Towards the end of season five was when I could kind of see a turn. Like, Cody either did a really good job, I think he, I've read articles, they did a really good job of hiding how controlling he was before that, or it just starts to come out at the end of season five. Because, like, the road trip to that, FLDS, Joseph Smith, where he was killed and all that stuff, that town in Illinois. Um, that whole trip, like, he thought, I, I thought he was going to lose his mind, okay? Or is that season six? Is that episode one? No, that's because I started season six last night. And then I went in and I'm watching Dark Matter, which I loved that book, but I'm having such a hard time getting through the TV show. But now, now I'm kind of into it, but only if I watch, like, an episode a night. But anyway, the highlights of the last, what, episode, season three, four, and five, Robin had her baby. Nobody really, like, it seems like, more people were interested in truly being born to Christine than anybody was interested in. Christine's always bitter and jealous of Robin. Like, they're all like, oh, I, I, Christine's always like, I didn't marry, she says this nine million times, I didn't marry for Cody, I married for the sister wives. But then she's constantly pissed at the sister wives. She's constantly pissed at Mary. She's constantly pissed at Robin. And I'm like, well, they're your sister wives. You married for them, okay? You've said that nine million times. And I like Christine, okay? So I'm not like a Christine hater. So my, my best friend, Tanya Jean, she goes, in order, who are your favorites and I said to her okay right now my favorites are in order and it kind of changed a little bit like Mary's my all-time favorite I don't know why and I know that there's been all these allegations that's come out against Mary and stuff like that I'm not there yet okay so I'm just talking about season five and below right now Mary's my favorite I just feel like Mary is somebody that like I'd be good friends with like she reminds me of a lot of my good Judy's like I like Mary okay and I like how direct she is and she knows what she wants and things like that I really like Mary a lot um, and so Mary's the, would be my favorite underneath Mary. So it's interesting because I used to like at the beginning, I, I really was not a fan of Robin and somebody even said like, you got, you got Robin uh, pegged already. Like I felt like Robin would say things like, well, I don't really want to hurt my sister wives, but then she turned around and she hurt her sister wives. I feel like Robin though, in the last three seasons has really demonstrated that she wants to be a good sister wife to these other women. I think she has tried so hard and Christine, like Janelle just seems like she could care less about anything. Okay. Janelle, like it's just like put her in a house by herself and she'd be completely fine. Although I know that that's where Mary kind of like ends up mind state, but like Janelle just doesn't seem like she cares about anything. I mean, Janelle on that couch, I have never, never in a confessional couch or confessional show ever seen somebody throw such mean mugs like Janelle I mean they are talking and she's like this I mean she is she mean mugs through that whole those confessional things I cannot wait until she starts ripping into some of these women because I just know it's going to come out and I know it's going to happen because I've read the articles and I'm ready for it so anyway but uh, Mary's my all-time favorite uh, right now. This will probably change from season to season. Then it was Christine. But now, I have to tell you, I really like Robin. Like, Robin, there's something very endearing about her and very sweet. I feel really horrible for her. Like, she just shared in season five about going through the abusive relationship with her ex and things like that. There's something very endearing about her. Um, I do very much feel like Robin's in it to win it for herself at any cost. But I think that she really, really cares about Robin. And she really cared about Christine and Janelle, but they just really wouldn't let her in. So Robin's probably my second favorite. Then Christine. I just think that Christine's very sweet and whatever. It makes sense to me, though, that Christine leaves. And she says that she doesn't feel like they're in love anymore. I know that that happens down the road. And she's remarried and all that kind of stuff. I, it doesn't surprise me. Because, like, in season one, when he's, like, courting Robin, first of all, I just will say... Like he makes such a big deal about not kissing before you're engaged and all this kind of stuff. He kissed Robin full on the lips when he left her to go when Christine was having Truly. And he references it in like the fourth season. And it's like, it must have got a, bad, a lot of bad press at that time because he comes out and he addresses it in a video or in an episode, right? But like, if I were Christine and I knew that, I don't know that she, well, she would have now because she's watched back those episodes, but I would have been so pissed about that. I mean, I understand, right? But Christine's the one that's all the time talking. I mean, Mary's like, she knew she was marrying into a plug family. She knew what she was getting into. But Christine says the same things, but then she acts so different than that. Like, she acts so jealous, and, like, she has such a hard time of it and all this kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that it would be easy. I mean, I know, okay? I, I would never be in a, a polygamous family. I would not want to... I mean, I would want to have sister wives just to hang out and watch TV shows. And uh, I don't cook, so I just sit there and eat the dip while they're cooking and stuff like that. I mean, I think that part of it... <laughs> I mean, I'm jokingly saying this, okay? But, like, 
that's appealing to me. But like sharing a man with four other women or three other women, or let alone like 27, like some of these people do. No, ma'am. Uh -uh, there's no way. And so, you know, for me, like Christine, like I get her as a person. I just don't think this is a lifestyle for her. And I think she's trying to convince herself that this is the lifestyle for her. And then, you know, the, then the reality sets in, and this is where I'm at because I'm five seasons in now, is that it's like all these kids are like products of Cody and Christine or, you know, like Cody and Janelle. And so it's like they're greatly affected by this. And you can see this down the road with like all the stuff that they go through. Like, you know, later, even once they've left the show, like a lot of these kids have had like, I mean, we, we know with like, you know, uh, Garrison's passing and stuff like that last spring, which I think they're going to show in season 18 which I will be caught up with by August 20th when it premieres. Um, you know, like, I, and I'm not blaming that on the show, but a lot of these kids have come out and talked about, like, allegations against Mary and how cruel she was behind the scenes, and the show never showed that. And a lot of these other kids have talked about that they just didn't love it. Madison, from the very beginning, and I love Madison on the show. She's very much like, I don't ever want to be a polygamous marriage. I would never share my husband, but there's a lot of good benefits from it. Actually, actually, probably one of the most profound episodes of the five seasons I've watched so far was when Aspen, Madison, and Logan go to help the um, the the organization. I can't remember what it's called, but it's uh, it's where they the woman is helping people leave the polygamous lifestyle if they feel like they're being abused or they're in danger, and they're like painting the house and getting the house ready for somebody. Apparently, the one girl that was on there, Colette, she was also an escaping polygamy. I don't know anything about that, but I was like looking into it because um, she has very firm stances on that. But that to me was like, it was interesting that the show chose to do that. It felt very much like the producers designed that for the kids to do, to show the difference between the Browns and, and I don't know if that's come out later because I didn't read that far into it, but that the, that the producers decided for the kids to do that or offered for the kids to do that and have then those kids well, they were grown adults. They were like 19 and 25 or something like that. But then come over to visit with the Browns to see a different side of polygamy to make it very clear to the viewer. We're Because this is like, at the time that that was going on, was when, I mean, this was long before the Keep Sweet, Pray and Obey uh, documentary came out. This is when, like, we are in, like, the, the meat and potatoes of the Warren Jeffs scandal and all that kind of stuff, right? And so I think that for to save the show, they did that episode, which was very meaningful episode. Um, to sh I mean, to, to hear, like, that one girl's story about how her and her mom, and they were part of all of that with the Warren Jeff situation, um, her and her mom and her sisters, like, had to leave, and really had no place to go and they had a guy that came over to them and was like I'm your new father and whatever like I mean it's so scary it's like it's so bizarre to even think that like happened you know in our world and so you know and I was looking into it and there's like 100,000 polygamous people or polygamous families in the United States and who knows how they're being done but you know and while I was watching that episode like it was very endearing episode to see both sides really learn from the other side but at the same time it felt very uh it felt very planned to me that they did that to show that there was a huge difference to the to the viewing crowd, right? To make a huge difference between the Warren Jeff situation and the FLDS church and uh, and uh, the the Browns. What's interesting is that the Browns kind of go back and forth on what their religious stance really is. It's really really interesting to me, you know. Like they did this whole episode where they're asked questions and. Um, and I don't want to get to this until later when it comes out, but like with several of the different, uh, the kids and things like that. But one of the questions they're asked is something about, like Janelle asked the questions, like if one of your kids came out as gay, like what would you do? And she said, we would accept them as, you know, loving who they love and things like that. It's very like, uh, like the very like viewer friendly, like question answer kind of thing. Which is interesting because that does not align with the LDS church or the FDL, the FLDS church. And so they kind of go back and forth. It's like Janelle, I don't know if she's come out later and talked about this, but she doesn't ever seem to really, she talks about like our father and like the mission of being a sister wife, but they don't like really ever say that it aligns with like this, I, I don't know. And then like there was an episode where they meet the Dargers, which apparently they have their own show called My Three Wives or something, or it's canceled now, I think. But they're the ones that wrote the book that prompted uh, Big Love, the, the TV show that was with, um, I, don't, I can't remember who the actresses are. My cousin watched that. She watches all these religious shows. But anyway, um, 
Chloe Sabini was in that. I can't think some other like big actresses were in that. It was like really big hit on HBO for a while. And so the Dargers were the ones that like their book inspired that TV show. So they're another polygamous family. It's a man that's married to three wives and two of them are twin sisters. Okay. So then they go on like this trip to California with them and they're completely two different families. It's interesting because the wives are like, oh, I like how he runs the family, but he's very controlling. You know, at that point in the show, if I had to pick between being in one family or the other, I would definitely pick the Browns over the Dargers any day of the week, right? And so it's really, really interesting when they show that. It's like they're trying to show different sides of polygamy and what, you know, all this kind of stuff and whatever. It's interesting because it's kind of at the point that they meet up and go on vacation with the Dargers that Cody's attitude really starts to turn. Because at that point is when the wives start joking that I think his name is Joe in the show, but that they wish like Joe, like, like they're like, oh, I like how Joe does this. I like how Joe does that. You can tell that Cody doesn't really like that, right? But as far as the religious stuff, like, Christine talks a lot about, like, being called by our father, or she'll say that kind of stuff. Mary really doesn't ever talk about that. She talks about it in retrospect of, like, when she first got married. But none of them, I mean, Robin's probably the most religious speaking of any on the show, but really none of them ever talk about it. Now, I, I've read articles that they don't, like, they show their, like, home church, uh, uh, whatever you want to call those, church sessions or whatever, but they don't ever show, like, going to a church. And they said they didn't want to show those things to, like, out those people online, which I get that, right? But they don't really go in and ever, at, at least up to the end of season five, ever really go in and explain. And I know that there's a book that they wrote. And I'm not at the point where I want to read that book right now. But anyway, um, but they don't really ever go in and explain, like, in an episode, like, what really do they believe religiously, other than that they believe that polygamy is a part of their religion that gets you closer to heaven, right? So, like, I don't, it gets you closer to the Father and heaven and stuff like that. But, like, there, and then they talk about the Dargers being, like, an independent FLDS, like, they're, like, on their own independent FLDS religion, and they're not FLDS, but they're not, and the Browns are not FLDS, but they're not LDS either. So, are y'all just your made-up religions? So that's where I'm like at with the show, if you want to know the truth. Like, I don't care that deeply about it because I'll tell you, I love watching Sister Wives because there's like an innocence to me of them all just hanging out and traveling. And that's the part that I really like about it. I don't think too much that deeply about it. But when I'm off it, I'm talking to other, I'm talking to people that have watched it or friends of mine or my cousin or whatever, Caroline, you know, I'm talking to them about it. Like, that is interesting to me. It's like, you guys don't really ever go into a discussion about this. And then it's like, oh, the Dargers are independent FLDS. Well, what does that mean? Like, they made up their own, like, rules for their own religion. Oh, and you guys do too because you don't all follow the same thing. It's like Janelle made a comment what was the comment that she made? It was in the last episode of season five. And she said something. It was so interesting to me because she was like, I don't really care. Like, it was something about the Joseph Smith when they went to go there and visit. She's like, oh, this is what she says. And this is so interesting because I do know quite a few Mormons that have left the LDS church. And they'll say... This is, like, it's very much the sentiment of what Janelle says in there. She'll, she said in there, he's not our father. He's not Jesus. He was just a man. Joseph Smith was just a man. And I thought it was so interesting because I've heard a lot of people that have left, like, the Mormon religion and the Mormon faith have said that. Like, to me. I've had conversations with them. So when Janelle said that, I was like, that's interesting to me, right? Like, you have this take. When... Cody's over there and he's basically like, oh my God, because Joseph Smith was this prophet, you know, the Mormon church and all this kind of stuff. And it all started with him. And he's like, oh my God, I feel like we're on sacred ground. And Christine's like, oh, my kids are playing on Joseph's grounds where his kids played. And then Janelle's standing over there. I don't know, like Janelle for me, I know that Christine's the first one to leave. It surprises me because Janelle just seems so checked out the whole show. Like, I don't know if she didn't want to do the show. I don't know if she's bitter because she didn't get to keep her job up. Because she seems like, she, she always, like, in the first episode or first season, she's like, I'm a working person. Like, I enjoy my job. And then when they have to move to Las Vegas, she seems so pissed about it. And I don't blame her. Like, she had her own independence. But then she relied on Christine to take care of her kids. So now she's like, and she says this a couple times, she's like, I'm at home all the time with the kids. Well, girl, okay, I mean, you wanted to be a sister wife with 400 kids. So, like, that's what you bargained for a little bit. It's hard for me to feel really bad for them when they chose to marry into this. So, um, everything that comes out after that, I don't know. Like, the kids didn't have a choice, right? So, I feel bad for the kids. But I, for the wives, like, I don't know what happens in the further seasons. I'm just talking up to season five. So, I will let you guys know what I think as the further seasons come out. But that's where I'm at right now. Um... 
I feel like a lot's gonna change in this next... It was interesting because I was reading these articles, like, ranking the seasons, like, in order, like, which best to worst. And somebody said season four was, like, the third best season. I thought season four was boring. Season five, I thought was a great season. You know, it seemed like getting the houses, like, built and getting the loans for the houses and all that kind of stuff... I don't know if the house has ever come. I don't know when they moved to Arizona. I'm just kind of trying to watch it and like not, I read a lot, but I don't try to read about each season, like what happens, if that makes sense. So I'm just keeping up with it, keeping up with the Browns and his hairdo. He's got five wives, if you didn't know, okay? He's got Mary, he's got Janelle, he's got uh, Christine, he's got Robin, and he's got his hairdo. Okay, hairdo's for you. That's Cody Brown's fifth wife. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you're watching Sister Wives or if you've watched it before, I am loving watching it. Thank you for the recommendation. Put any other show recommendations in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.